contrasting filling and cake make a beautiful and dramatic dessert. But in some ways, you're fighting the laws of physics. The cake rolls best when it's warm, but a warm cake will melt the filling. In this video, I'll show you how to make a cake that rolls beautifully and keeps the filling cool. The real secret to making a roulade is to pre-roll the cake while it's still hot out of the oven, like this one, because that trains the cake so that it will roll back up more easily with the filling once it's cooled. Then we unroll it, and when it's cool, we'll roll the filling in it, and that way the, the shape will already be uh, in its memory and it will roll very easily. So as you take it out of the oven, loosen it from the sides of the pan with a paring knife. Separate it from the paper, from the edges. There we go. And now, so it doesn't stick to the towel we're going to lay on it next, we're going to sift a couple of tablespoons of powdered sugar on the cake. This is an almond cake, but if you're working with a chocolate cake, you can use cocoa here, so the cake isn't dusted all white. But the idea is to prevent it from sticking. So now, first I put a cloth over the cake, and I want one end, one short end, to be about one and a half inches from the edge. That's the end I'm going to use to roll it up. The other end doesn't matter. Then either put a rack or a board over it. And since the pan is still hot, use your mitts. So grab both sides firmly and flip it over. There we go. Okay, now let's take off the pan and we can gently peel off the paper. Okay. If a little gets stuck on the paper, don't worry about it. All right, so now we're going to do our pre roll. So now you just roll it up. Use both hands and start at the end with that one and a half inch overhang. You want to roll it quite tightly so you get that perfect little curl in the middle of the cake. And by the way, you want the towel you use here to be a thin, flat weave kind of towel. Um, linen works very well, but definitely skip ones like terry cloth because it can leave lint on your cake. And be sure you're not using fabric softener or scented detergents when you wash them because that can also transfer to the cake and give you some unintended aromas. Okay, now that the cake is rolled, we want to let it cool in this position for about 30 minutes. So now we're going to unroll the cake. So you can see that there are some uh, uh, curls on it. If you see any little cracks here, don't worry about it. When you roll the cake up again, you won't see them. So now we've trained it. You see how this, this side is curled up. That's going to be in the middle. That's good. So when we re-roll it when it's cool, um, it will be easy to roll up again. So now we're going to let it cool completely for about 10 to 15 minutes. So now we're going to make our filling. It's very simple. It's just seedless raspberry jam, and then I'm going to put some fresh raspberries in it. The first thing you want to do is to loosen up the jam. You can sort of whisk it with a fork, it's fine. That looks good. So now I'm going to add the berries and just crush them against the side of the bowl to mix them in. You don't want to crush too deeply because it'll just release a lot of juice. Just enough to combine them with the jam. There we go. So now we'll spread the filling on the cake. So get it all on the cake first and now we want to spread it so that we have about half an inch on the sides and about an inch and a half on this far edge because otherwise if you put it too close to that edge it'll squish out as you as you roll it up and evenly half inch over here the important thing is to make sure you get the jam inside this a middle curl here so that uh, you will have some jam in the middle of your spiral. 
Okay. There we go. All right. So now you just roll it up again with your fingers and leave the towel behind and the cake already knows what to do. Now go lightly because you don't want to squish out the filling. Some of it may squish out, but make sure you leave room for it as you roll. Great. See? It knows exactly what to do. So sometimes a crack may appear as it, as it has here but that'll get covered by your frosting. So I'm just going to move it up so it's right in the middle and I'll be putting whipped cream on top so you won't even see it. So now we're going to cut the ends of the cake. Just use a serrated knife with a sawing motion because this is going to be very pretty and what your guests will see. And then use two large spatulas to move the cake onto your serving platter. Over time, the jam filling will seep into the cake, so plan on serving it soon after you've added the filling. 